really been a good fall for us and, and probably, um, you know, a lot like we expected. Uh, we expected, uh, as we've talked about in the past, uh, a bunch of returning position players that, that we would swing it well and defend it well. And, and we have, uh, you know, this fall, uh, sometimes more than probably we'd like because we're on the other side of the ball and we pitch it as well. Uh, but, you know, that you know, brings us to the other point of, you know, trying to kind of decipher through a, a really large, you know, number of pitchers, uh, but very talented. And, uh, you know, I think we, we know a little more than we, we did at the beginning. Uh, still, you know, the answers or the question is always going to be who's going to be the Friday night guy or who's going to be the weekend guys. You know, we're trying to, that's, I think, probably the biggest goal is trying to, 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 to whittle those numbers down. But I think it's no secret when you, you looked at um, uh, a couple of weeks ago when we played Arkansas Little Rock. Those are the guys uh, pitching that we think have the best opportunity. Um, I think uh, you'll see this weekend against the University of Alabama, um, those guys pitch, and then a couple other guys, Hunter Elliott will pitch uh, an inning along with Dylan DeLucia, uh, that uh, guys that were kind of if neck guys that I think you know, deserve an opportunity to run out there, you know, when you're playing outside competition. So, uh, you know, probably those eight guys uh, through that, you know, I think will you know, the guys that'll pitch on the weekend, but uh, it's been good. You know, uh, uh, Dunhurst is, uh, is is starting to catch some now and, and, and swinging. Um, Chofi uh, got off the mound uh, for the first time, I think Friday. Uh, and he threw yesterday off the mound a little bit. Obviously it's a, it's a, it's a long, long process and uh but uh, he's done really well and elko's you know hitting off a tee i think he starts taking some live bp uh by the end of this week but uh, you know still no no chance for him uh to to get on a field this this fall but just kind of slow but i know when when you have surgery and you're in that long uh rehab protocol and you know working back um those little moments like, you know, Trophy got this week and Elko hitting, you know, in the cage, uh, you know, keep them motivated. And so that's, it's been nice to see. So uh, with that, leave it up to you guys. All right. Um, raise your hand if you have questions and we'll uh, let you go. Anybody? I don't see a hand raise function, Alex, but oh. Yeah, sorry if I'm missing it. I'm missing it. I might need Mike's okay. help. Uh, anyway, Mike, just I know you're a little mixed on these uh, games because you only get half the at bats, half the innings versus having a normal inner squad. Is there any extra pluses and minuses? Is it just with it being Alabama and being a conference opponent? No, I, I mean I think you know the the biggest challenge. I think it's the obvious one, Chase, that uh, you're playing a really good team. You know, you're playing a team that, you know, made it to the NCAA tournament last year, a conference opponent that, uh, you know, is very you know, respected and one that we play every single year. And you now this is not to take away from any of the teams that we've played in the past. I think you know, from our fan standpoint, it might be even a little more interest as well. Uh, but talking to Coach Bohannon and uh, they had played state a few weeks ago, um, uh it's it's a practice game to us. Yeah, we want to win. I mean, that's how we're built. You know, you, know, you want to play well. Uh, probably is the 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 most important thing. You know, do do we pitch it a little bit better? Do we hit it a little bit better? Um, you know, than than we have been doing. So yeah, you're right. I do have mixed emotions about it, but none to jump on some soapbox. This you know, you know challenge that we shouldn't play false scrimmages. I I, I get it. I think you know some people. Uh, may love the idea more than I do, um, but I think it's good. And so I think it's the right number too. I wouldn't really want to do it more than two weekends, um, but, uh, but I think it's fun. It kind of breaks up the monotony uh, as you probably remember, you know, there was a time where we only went four weeks. And so uh, now that, you know, we're playing seven different weekends, um, it can be a longer fall, even though there's more uh, off days mixed in, it can be a longer fall. And I think with that 45 day window, uh, this gives an opportunity to kind of break it up. And I know the players are super excited about it. So that's, uh, that's, you know, the biggest part, which is, which is a good one. 
how's Diamond feeling and just sort of where, where do you kind of see his his progress right now? He's been great. Uh, and matter of fact, he'll, he'll be the opening pitcher, you know, this weekend. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, re- wanted to reward him for, for as well as he's thrown it. I mean, he's uh, uh, we've worked on a few things. And the biggest thing is to be able to become who you are and, and who we think you, you are. And, and we all agree when I say all the staff and him that, you know, he's really a four pitch mix guy. We've, we brought back the curveball that uh, we haven't, we didn't throw last year uh, and really, you know, tried to concentrate on being that guy that could locate, you know, his pitches uh, uh, on all of them, all four of them versus being the guy that's going to light up the radar gun. Uh, he still throws real hard. He throws you know, just about as hard as anybody we got. Uh, every weekend he averages you know, around 92 miles an hour. Um, but he's but he's pitched really well, and uh, uh, and I'm proud of that. You know, it seems like every weekend he goes out, he's really sharp. He feels great. Um, so it's it's been a good fall for Dare. Kind of along those same lines, just your transfers, Washburn, Gaddis, just kind of some quick thoughts. Uh, Washburn, we did not pitch last weekend. He pulled his hamstring in conditioning. Uh, he'll pitch, uh, and it'll actually start that second segment, uh, this, uh, this weekend against Alabama, that second six innings, um, uh, in the, in the 12 inning, you know, inner squad. Um, uh, he's been really good to both of those guys. Uh, it's hard to imagine, especially result wise, uh, to, to, you know, pitch much better than they both pitched. Uh, you know, um, they've, I think um, Gaddis gave up his first runs this past weekend. So, you know, and it took him four weeks that before he gave up a run. Um, uh, I'm not sure if you saw it, but, you know, uh, the, the only runs that uh, Washburn had given up were in that game against Little Rock where, you know, uh, Gonzo lost the ball in the sun. There was an infield single. And then we had Graham playing first base on a first and third play where Graham didn't run it, you know, or execute the play. And so really, you know, it's one of those, yeah, it goes down on, you know, Washburn's ERA, but the truth of the matter is he pitched really well. So both those guys have been lights out. Whether it be freshman, JUCO transfers, whatnot, you know, we don't really know how they'll transfer transition in year one by the time the spring gets there. Do you get signs of that, though, in the fall? Can you start to tell during this point of the, the process maybe how they're going to how they're going to do? We hope. Okay, uh, but, you know, you're right. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, one of the biggest, I think, uh, you know, things we, we try to kind of temper, you know, the, the, the feelings, you know, don't get too excited. Guy has good BP, guy has a good bullpen, has a good inner squad game. And that's not to you know, try to downplay things. It's just, you don't, you just don't want to be the roller coaster, right? You don't want to be the roller coaster coach where, Hey, this is the flavor of the week. And this is the guy that we're high on. And then the next week he has a tough weekend and somebody, you know, um, I, you know, that's one of the reasons that, you know, they're all going to develop, as you said, at, at different times. The biggest thing is that we get this, you know, information, we get our system in, we, 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 we coach them. Um, and, uh, you know, yes, though, there's a human side of it to where, you know, we're sitting there and I kind of started the, you know, the zoom with that, trying to figure out the picture. So, I mean, we're not going to shy away from that. Uh, but at the end of the day, we got to be careful uh, of, you know, uh, again, getting too excited because a guy, you know, had a good day and got three hits or, you know, a guy, you know, got, you know, six up, six down in an inner squad game. I mean, a lot of guys have done that and really never done anything here, right? A lot of guys have had a, a good game or a good couple weeks uh, or maybe even a good fall for that matter. You know, but never you know mounted much when you when you put ten twelve thousand into the stadium. So, I think we kind of temper our, our our feelings that way. Uh, but there's no rhyme or reason where you look at guys, and it's it's tough. I think that the thing that people forget um, is uh, it's tough for anybody. It's not just the freshmen, but junior college kids, transfers. It's tough to immediately walk into a locker room and, and make an impact, you know, especially in our league, you know, where it's the, the very best. It's, it's a tough ask. Uh, certainly the older guys, a guy like Washburn, that's played in a big, you know, big, uh, power five conference and has had success or a guy even like Gaddis, 
who, you know, maybe comes from, you know, the Southland Conference, but was, you know, pitcher of the year and has, has always had success. You know, you're hoping that's going to translate to uh, a quicker success than just your typical freshman. Is the portal just good from the standpoint of adding guys, roster management? I mean, you guys have so many rules and difficulties on just, you know, ma making the money work and making the scholarships work and everything. Are there are there kind of negatives to that, or is it mostly all positive for you? How do you kind of see it overall? I don't know. You know, I, I, I you know, this is not trying to run from the question, but yeah, I, I don't know if any of us know. Uh, you know, and and you know me just from that last answer I gave you, you know, I, I don't want to take things back necessarily, you know, so I probably would reserve, you know, you know, some time to, 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 you know, make that answer or that, you know, to answer that question. Um, um, we, this was a tough summer, you know, this was a tough summer with the, the draft uh, getting pushed to July. First time we've ever dealt with that. Uh, the portal at the same time with the rules. And, and the truth is, you know, uh, a lot of players not knowing what the rules are, you know, not knowing that they had to, you know, uh, register or get into the portal before July 1. Um, kids using it, unfortunately, as a way to get drafted. You know, that happened in certain situations where, hey, I'm, you know, he's committed to school X if he doesn't get drafted. And, and so kind of a, you know, bargaining chip. Um, we saw a lot of things this summer um, that were new to us. And so that's kind of the reason for the delay in the answer is I, I don't know what the, the and it may, it, you know, it may go in a lot of different directions. Uh, um but but from from our standpoint, yeah, you know, once once the season ended, you know, uh, knowing where we were pitching wise, I thought Gaddis and, and Washburn were, were huge pickups for us, and and you know, the hope is, you know, that's going to be a good thing for Ole Miss. Uh, you know, also you get kids that go into the portal. Um, less about the portal because I think that's the in vogue thing. You know, that's what everybody, oh, the portal. Um, I, I think it's it's more the opportunity. My hope is, uh, you know that the kids can transfer, you know, because of our scholarship limitations. Uh, I've always been uh, a proponent that uh, of the one-time transfer, you know, kids should be, you know, in our sport, how, how can, how can anybody, the NCAA or anybody really understand, you know, say they understand baseball where a kid's on 25% of a scholarship, he's not playing at a school he wants to transfer the school's fine with him transferring it wasn't what he thought it was his parents are paying literally over thirty thousand dollars for him to go to school here and the reason he's going to school here or the school lex is because he wanted to play baseball and that's not happening he wants to transfer and you're going to make him sit out of here he's a great student i mean it's all these things but you know that that to me never made sense i i understand you know maybe you know the from the recruiting side of it and offering you know he's a full scholarship but i mean you're talking about a lot of financial uh difficulties you know and families that are you know trying to to do this college thing and do it the right way and so that's probably the thing that I like the best about it is gives kids those opportunities that when it's not working out, you know, for whatever the reason, you know, and I, and I think, you know, a lot of those, you know, that one time transfer went away because of the few rogue incidences where, you know, you, oh, they got 67 guys out in the fall and are just cutting people. And not to say that's never happened at a program, but we got 300 programs. I mean, 300 of them. I mean, like that's, you know, go out to most fall practices. There's not 67 guys out there. And it's, you know, um, and so to anyway, uh, I'm jumping on the soapbox, but uh, I, I don't really know how I really feel about it. I, I, I'm good with it now. It is what it is. Um, and now, you know, my job and our staff's job is to, 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 uh, to be able to, to use it in such a way that's going to help our baseball program. Yeah, you mentioned it. I, I remember back, I guess, before 07 and whenever that rule changed, you had the ability to transfer without penalty. Guys coming into the program, guys like Andrew Clark leaving. Do you feel like it's going to be more prominent or, or, or prevalent now, though, than maybe back then? I mean, do you feel like it's about the same ratios or anything? Or you think things have kind of just changed over the last decade and a half? I think where you probably see it, uh, where you see the difference, um, I think just because of the awareness and somebody going into the portal and the ease, I, I think, you know, you'll, you'll see it in some of the smaller schools. 
I, I don't, I don't have a fear that like, we're going to lose players. You know, I, I don't, I don't, you know, that's our job. Our job is, you know, that they should come here and, and not only, you know, have a good baseball experience, but have a good life experience, right. To get a good data education. I mean, that's, that's what we're in the business of doing. And so you're hopeful that, that the kids are going to enjoy their experience here and want to be a part of it. And, you know, for the most part, not, not 100%. You know, I don't think anybody's 100%, but I feel, you know, being here for 21 years, I feel pretty comfortable that, you know, uh, you know, we've, we, we got a lot of good, you know, a lot of good stories here where a lot of kids have enjoyed it. So I think from, from that standpoint, uh, you know, uh, where we, we feel comfortable. I just, I don't know where the other parts, I don't know if it's going to be more transferred. I, I, um, I don't know. I don't necessarily think in our league. <laughs> 